they're going to respect you more for that conversation and the honesty in that conversation than if you tiptoe around it and you let them you let them just keep getting away with shit because they're your best homie in the office or you know they're your most valuable player that's how the entitlement gets developed and that always comes back to you as the leader real business owner, real business owner. whatever your situation is currently is not your forever situation that's really what real business owners is man like we don't care where you come from yeah. where are you going our goal and our job is to reduce the mistakes that you have to make or the money that you have to lose. You want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be successful, don't give up. You learn, adjust, and continue to move forward. Welcome back to the Real Business Owners Podcast. This is Trevor, as always, Kilo G. What's up? We're back together again. Back together again. We've had a solo, couple solo. solo. Over. Well, yeah. we did a couple solos, so it's actually like we haven't done one together for a couple, yeah. like a week or two. Look you know? forward, look forward to Kel's solo <laughs> next week, and it's and and watch it on YouTube. Okay. Um, but no, today we wanted to we wanted to um, talk about something that that we felt as though that we've had some experience uh, uh, dealing with. Um, I, and I think anybody that's been in business long enough right. has felt, yeah. um, that, that emotion or that, that issue, um, within their business. And the issue really is, is, um, handcuffed, you know, you're handcuffed to employees to a certain right. extent. Yeah. Right? We like, were, we were just joking about how the golden handcuffs can go both ways. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? like, so, I mean, sometimes you want to pay an employee so great and they call that the golden handcuffs, meaning you're now handcuffed to the business because you make, you know, 200 or 300 or 400. Basically, you have an opportunity to make entrepreneurship type money right. without having to take the risks of entrepreneurship. And that's what they pretty much call the golden handcuffs, right? Yeah. That's where an employer overpays somebody or pays somebody very, very well to do whatever they're doing so that they don't risk that individual leaving the organization. Right. That's golden handcuffs. Yeah. Uh, but, but what happens on the flip side when you unload so much of your daily stresses, you become dependent on that key player, that key role. Plus you get really close to them. They become like your family. Right. And then what happens is when like all of a sudden maybe some entitlement kicks in on their end, or maybe it's on your end, or maybe there's just this weird disconnect. You go through something and you're like, Oh my gosh, this is not okay. Like something's changed, right? The vibes changed. Something's changed. Well now you got the golden handcuffs on you, right? Because you're you're like, oh, dude, I can't replace this guy. Not easily, right? Like, it's going to take a minute. I'm going to have to jump back in and do some things. that. But now I'm working on these other things. And so it's like, if you guys don't have a solid, solid, solid Structure. relationship, open lines of communication or whatever happens, right? Like, now you're kind of both in this situation where it's like, well, I can't leave because I'm not, I'm not going to go make whatever it is, three, four, five hundred grand somewhere else. Right. As the employee. But then you're as the owner, like, man, I can't really like replace this guy easily. Plus, I love him. Like, we're like family. It's like now you guys are just creating this weird situation. So the whole idea, me and Trevor were talking was like, man, like we we love our our key players. We love our our, our team. We love our culture. We love all these these people within our organization. But what is the fine line of like how close you get with your people inside and outside the office. Like what is, mm -hmm. what is the smart thing? And honestly, we don't know a hundred percent. We go through it ourselves. Right. But we thought we would talk about that today because I think it's something that, that every business owner goes through because we, we are literally here yeah. with, with our family more than we are with our family, yeah. our work family, yeah, 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 more yeah, yeah, than our, yeah. our home yeah. families. Right. Yeah. Like we're here eight, nine, 10 hours a day. Sometimes when we're at our home, like, you know, family time from six to nine and we go to bed. Right. So I mean, let, let's just call a spade a spade. Um, Every, every business owner has an individual in their business that they don't want leaving their business because they know that it would cause pain. It right. would cause hurt. It would cause a little bit of struggle, uh, as Kel alluded to, maybe forcing you to do some things that you didn't want to have to do, maybe jump back on the front lines again and fight the fight. Um, again, it, it, in some cases... What you want to do and what you have to do are two different things. Okay. Yep. In some cases, you're going to have to do things that you don't want to do. Welcome to business, right? Yep. We all know that. If you're an entrepreneur listening to this, you've done a million fucking things that you didn't want to do, but you, you, you put the big point pants on or big girl pants on and you handled your business that day and you became better as an individual for doing so. Your business became better uh, for you doing so. But the issue is, is if you're feeling that right now, like, fuck, we can't have X leave right now. Right. Whoever that X player is in your organization, it could be Steve, Bob, you know, uh, 
Jess, it could be Sarah, it could be, you know, whoever their name is, right? right. Enter that person, right? right. Um, you, the golden handcuffs are starting to be put on you. Right. You're relying so heavily on one individual in your organization that if that individual leaves or bounces, you're fucked, okay? right? Um, therefore, you lose a little sleep at night like, oh, I wa well, I wonder how they think about this. I wonder if that conversation went okay. Or when you need to be very direct with them, it's harder for you to be direct with them because you do not want to get them flustered, upset, or frustrated where, and then have them say, fuck you, I'm out of here. That's where I've so, struggled the most, man. Is what do you end up doing? tiptoeing around uh, all the shit or nothing. avoiding, right? It's like, man, I don't want to take the wind out of their sails. I don't want to, you know, put them on a lull. Even if you feel like they already are in a lull, you're like, well, I don't want it to get worse. No. And so I don't want to say something that's going to hurt their feelings because I'm in a position where I need to be direct with them right now yeah. or I need to call them out and I got to put business first right now. And that's going to be hard because like, you know, how are they going to take it? And am I going to hurt their feelings? And is that going to make it worse for a week or two? Or, you know what I mean? So you play that game in your head. I've gotten a hell of a lot better over the years, but I still struggle with that, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's evolution. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like by the time, the, the entire point of life uh, of, of anything, just yeah. anything in general is to extract lessons and learn from it, right? Like over a period of time, right? So we've we've been in the game long enough. We've seen how certain things can kind of play out. And then you're the fucking idiot if you continue to do the exact same thing that's put you in bad situations yeah. over and over and over, right? And so it's up to us or you, the listener, to make sure that you're insulating yourself from a situation that could turn negative and implode your business or implode your mentality or put you in a situation where you can't fulfill some of the things that you need to fulfill. So now you got upset customers and do not rely heavily on one sole individual in your business. Make sure that the duties are distributed properly. Make sure everybody's aware of what your duties are in the organization. Make sure that the duties are well documented with inside of that organization. Kel's been heavily focused on training, 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 video, 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 loom, everything that we do here so that the next person that needs to come up is less humans that need to reach over and assist or help that individual mm -hmm. when it's time. Let's use technology to our advantage and leverage that so they could watch the same video 30 fucking times if they need to, but we're not paying 30 hours for somebody to sit an hour with them yeah. 30 different times. And now we're paying double the cost to train one person when we don't even know if they'll work out long term. Right. Right. Exactly. But the idea is to do exactly what we just talked about. Separate things out well enough to where you're not dependent on one sole individual, but also they say, make sure that you have another individual in your organization that knows how to do those same things. If you have one, you need two, right? Right. Yeah. Like, look, we've got two videographers sitting right here with us right now on the podcast. And we only had Nick for a period of time. And what did that do? It caused a little stress for Nick. It caused yeah. a little bit of stress for us. Why? Because if Nick is out sick or Nick gets hit by a bus, then everybody's fucked. Right. right. And so that's why what we do is we make sure we got two in, you know, and we have a couple that, that are, not in-house, right? So we have a pretty robust staff that all know how to do the exact same thing in case Nick is sick, we'll come in and, and help him out, yeah. right? And be like, dude, you're good. Be gone for like three days, rest, I got it. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's Absolutely. really what it's about is having individuals that are there to serve the other individual because it doesn't feel good to be the individual that the business solely depends on yeah. in a lot of different scenarios too. So it's not good, I don't think, for either party because yeah. it can create those entitlement issues that that you were talking right. about, like where they can say, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to do that. No, I don't. And then you're just like, well, fuck, well, what do I do? <laughs> I can't tell them to do it. Cause then they might get upset. And then if they're yeah. upset and then, and, and then they don't show up to work the next day, then I'm screwed. You have the golden handcuffs. Yeah. If that's your thought. <laughs> How does back it feel? On you, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you need to fucking MacGyver your way out of it. And yeah. Probably half the people listening have no idea who the fuck MacGyver is. Well, it's, it's such a crazy thing, though, too, because obviously everybody in this world is self-interested, right? Like, you know, like we, you know, when we care for somebody, we, you know, we do certain things, invest into them emotionally, whatever, to get certain emotions back, right? Yeah, like, yeah, if you're yeah. like, man, this is my dude, this is my homie, like, you just develop this relationship now, and you, you know, but then people also... They, it is hard for them to separate business and personal. So when you get really close to a employee, that's like, now they're like your homie. They're like your bro, right? Like your long lost brother or whatever. And then 
You do. Let's say my long lost bro is Nick, man. We're just like fist bumping every day. We're going to freaking dinner after work. We're freaking, our kids are playing together. You know, we're having barbecues with the family. You know, we're just things after things after things. And then what happens when it's like, oh, dude, by the way, we're bringing Lucas in. Uh, you know, just to work uh, side by side with you because you know, and then they're like, "Now well, it feels threatened." What the hell, man? Like they now they have this weird I thought threat, we were right? Bros, dude. Yeah, Why like, well, would you? Are you replacing me? Are you? Da, 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 da? Like, yeah. Am like, I just gonna be training my replacement? Yeah. You know, yeah. and like, so people have those insecurities. Yeah. All the so time. even when even though you have that talk with them, like, no, dude, but we're growing, and like, I don't like seeing you spread this thin. And you know, at the end of the day, like, we got to do what's best for the business. They're like, well, I think the best for the business is just me do it, right? Like, because they take pride in their work. Now you have this. Purse close in a or personal close relationship, you know, and so it makes it so hard to be like, man, and now they're in a funk, you know, and you're like, damn, how do I create this whole situation? Well, it, you know, it blurs the lines on what's right for the business versus what's right right for the relationship, yeah, or the friendship, right? Yeah. And so when the lines start getting blurred, some cases you're not making the right decisions for the business, you're making more of the right decisions for the relationship, yeah, or the friendship, so to speak. Um, then what's actually gonna and the right decision for the relationship and the business should be what's right for the business. Because if what's right for the business is right, what's right for the business, then it's right for the the friendship and the relationship. Right. Because both of you guys have the ability to have enhanced lives by the business being enhanced. Exactly. And so like, it's just hard for people to come to, 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 to have that perspective. But at the same time, a business should not depend on one sole individual. And that includes the fucking owner. Right. Cause the owner can go down in a plane crash. The owner can get hit by a train or a car mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And, 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 and if, if the business is solely dependent on even that individual, then your family's fucked. Yeah. You know, then all the employees, families are fucked. The employees are fucked. Like, everybody's screwed if a business depends on one individual. Exactly. And so you're not really building a business. You're building something that depends on one individual. That's not a business yeah. at all, right? And so a business is something that has the ability to thrive. And when you're talking about franchising, what do they say? You can't franchise unless the owner Thus, the business can run while the owner's nowhere to be found. Right. It has to be able to be self-sufficient to be considered even a franchise. Absolutely. And so that means they've simplified the model so much that anybody can come in and pretty much run it as long as you have the playbook, the X's and the O's right. of the the entrepreneur operating system, yeah. the EOS, right? Yeah. yeah. And so as long as you have that, you should be able to open up and kind of hopefully it's broken down well enough to where you can operate a business uh, because you know what each department's doing, you know what their duties are, you can call yeah. them out because it's all lined out and it's very clear for everybody to see and understand. And make sure you're replaceable as the owner. Make sure everybody else on the team is replaceable for their benefit and your benefit because it doesn't feel good for them to be at that needed for the business because they can grow resentments towards the business being overly needed. Right. And then, or entitlement issues can happen. And so, if you find yourself leaning a lot on one individual or two individuals in your organization, you're, you're, you're putting yourself in a potential uh, mess. Absolutely. Okay? Not, not that it might not be next week or next month, or it might not even happen for two fucking years, Yeah. but the future is coming. And it, it, and when it hits, it fucking hits hard and it hits fast mm -hmm. and you'll be spiraling wondering what the hell just happened. And then you're going to have more stress and pressure because now you're jumping in and even doing more mm -hmm. while you're trying to find and train the replacement. Yeah. And so be very, very fucking mindful about not putting yourself in a situation where employees have the ability to give you the golden handcuffs. Yep. Um, I just, it's, it's something that needs to be talked about because I, I don't think I've heard this topic a lot. I've heard the golden handcuffs yeah. in terms of entrepreneurs saying, oh, if they're that good, fucking put the golden handcuffs on them. Exactly. Pay the person. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've also heard like with Andy's, if you need, if you have one, you need two, but not every business owner can do that right out of the gate. Like there's phases of business and it's kind of like the strategic step packs that we talked about in previous episode where it's like, Dude, sometimes you do got to take a step back and pay and bring two people on your team and take less as the owner so that you have two people in that role. You know what I mean? And you have to do that like over and over and over again, but not always, especially if you're a startup, are you able to financially have two people in, in a role that's not ready for it yet, right? So... I think that it's very important to where if you're developing really close like relationships with your with your work family, man, that, to where they're literally work family, like you've got to have as a leader, you've got to have the ability to be strong, even if it's hard to have that open line of communication. Say, look, this is the game plan. 
Okay. Yes, you're a key player. Yes, we've got to keep it business. We've got to be able to keep our personal shit aside because there are going to be two of you. You know, I'm going to be bringing somebody on underneath you. You can look at that as an opportunity or you can look at that as a problem for you. But my intention is to make sure it's an opportunity. But in order to make an opportunity, you've got to be willing to train and mentor and, and bring that person up to your skill set level as quickly as possible and not have the ego of only you can be the best and you've got to be the one running the ship and all that stuff. You've got to be willing to like work side by side with people in order to take this thing to the next level. No, don't. You know, and no so, and, you know, like, and, I don't think it's bad to have personal close relationships with your family, like your work family or your employees or whatever, because we have that. Here. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it yeah, is yeah, a challenge, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But you've got to be a good enough leader to have that conversation and be like, look, like, this is where we're going. Don't let this personal shit that we have get in the way of that, because I have to let you know what the plan is. And I've got to follow that plan. And you've got to follow that plan if we're going to take this thing together to the top. Well, they should they should know that it's all love, right? Yeah. Until they don't operate at the standard that you've set. Right. And it doesn't matter who it is, whether mm -hmm. it's you or somebody else. I mean, it doesn't matter. Right. The standard is the standard is the standard, True. right? And so that is what determines what happens with an individual, not you, yeah. not the owners, yeah. right? That's the cool thing about having a standard. You're just like, dude, you, I don't have to have a tough conversation. You're just like, bro, that's that's not the standard here. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and you're, it's like a third party almost. You're yeah. like, dude, look, right? You know, it's not you having to call. It's the standard called you out because yeah. you didn't operate up to it. I do want to bring up one other thing. Kel talked about strategic step backs, or you know, if you have one, you got to have two. Um, that's tough to do, just as he alluded to. Mm -hmm. um, financially, all that that whole aspect to it. Okay. Uh, the emotion that you feel when you start doing some of this stuff is not going to match up to it being the right decision. Right. <laughs> the emotion's going to be like, fuck, am I doing the right thing? Like, am I doing it too early? Should I have not hired that? Per like, what? Like, so will you second guess yourself? Will you um, wonder if you're making the right decisions? Every single time, no matter when you make the decision to make that next hire, when you're kind of in that newer phase of business, maybe one to three year phase or whatever, you're questioning everything. Right. And and you make a decision and then you wonder if you made the right decision. And sometimes the emotion that you're, when you're questioning something doesn't match up to it being the right decision. And I want people to understand the reason why it doesn't match up to being the right decision is because you did make the right decision. Right. The right decision is always the harder decision to make, right? 100%. And so if you're feeling that emotion, like, fuck, man, what did I do? If anything, I think that you did make the right decision because you made the harder decision, which made you question the decision that you even made, yeah. right? And so because you're questioning the decision, if anything, that should be an inclination or an indicator that you probably made the right one. Absolutely. So and I would also say, um, going back a little bit to, to, to happen that open line of communication and being a strong leader and in, in having those conversations, just like when you're dating a chick, dude, like or chick dating a dude or whatever, or raising your kids or, you know, setting, you know, boundaries within your relationship. Like they always respect you more for it anyway. So even though it's like scary and you don't want to like cross those lines or, you know, uh, uh, you know, feel like you're bringing someone down by having honest conversations, they always respect you for it in the long run. You know how many right? times I've had a tough conversation and somebody either texted me or told me after the meeting, I needed that. I know. And you're always great at that. I, I struggle that. with that, but I've learned the hard way that like, you know what? They're going to respect you more for that conversation and the honesty in that conversation than if you tiptoe around it and you let them, you let them just keep getting away with shit because they're your best homie in the office or, you know, they're your most valuable player. That's how the entitlement gets developed. And that always comes back to you as the leader. Zero, right? cr zero critique will create entitlement. Exactly. Right. And entitlements created by expectation. Yeah. With zero appreciation. Right. And so if you give, 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 it's now expected. It's not appreciated. Yeah. Right. You expect the sun to come up tomorrow morning. Why? Because it's happened every other fucking day. Yeah. So therefore people don't appreciate it. Right. Exactly. They expect exactly. It. And if it didn't come up one day, you'd be like, what the fuck is going on? Because you expect it. Yeah. didn't appreciate it. And that's what happens with people in an organization. Mm -hmm. If you constantly give without having any tough conversation, appreciation goes to expectation and then moves to entitlement. Yeah. Right. And that's how it works. I had this Sunday school teacher years ago. It's crazy. I'm remembering this right now, but 
Um, I was going to take y'all to church. For <laughs> well, dude, when I, well, like my family stopped going to church when I was like 11, dude. So this was like a Sunday school teacher around 10 or 11 that, that told me this. Right. But we were in Sunday school class and we're talking about kind of something similar right now yeah. about how, you know, they'll respect, they'll respect you for standing your ground, setting boundaries and being honest. And so he's like, you know, my wife and I've been together for, I can't remember what it was, 20 whatever years. And we've had a great relationship, but he's like, you know, where it all changed is one day. You know, like I was like, I would just give her anything, right? Because I was Twitter pated. I loved her and they were young, like 18 or whatever in love. And uh, so he would just give, give, give and give. And he started realizing where that was going. Like, mm. you know, he was starting to feel kind of walked on yeah. and she's not aware of that. Right. Yeah. Like she just thinks, oh, I got this guy. I love him too. Like it's all the but brain he gives me whatever I want. Right. Yep. And he's like, when things got really good and we started really getting serious is when she came to me one day to borrow my car because I'd always let her. And I said, no, you're not borrowing my car, you know, because they want to go out with girlfriends and do all this stuff. He's like, no, you're not going, you're not borrowing my car, right? And he was like, I stood my ground. I drew a line in the sand because it was bothering me how she would just want to come over and take my car whenever, yeah. right? And here we are. We're not married yet, right? But everything got better. He's like, we... I developed respect from her at that point. She didn't, even though she liked me and mm. we were dating and all these mm. great things, she didn't actually respect me because I didn't stand my ground on anything. I like this. And so I finally told her, no, you're not borrowing my car. You know, if you want me to help you get your own car or, you know, figure out a plan for that, or you want me to, you know, whatever, like, I can't even remember where, he, where, where the other lessons were on that. But if you want me to, help you i will but you're not going to just take my car whenever you want you're not just going to walk on me and take advantage of me well, but she started like respecting this, me that that day she started respecting me and that's when our relationship actually started getting better well, we've we've all we've i think everybody's seen a, a relationship that's pretty one-sided where an individual is just being walked all over right. bowing down like doing whatever oh i've got to do this 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 appease 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 right and they're trying to appease to get the respect to get appreciation and it's actually doing the opposite. Yeah. In some cases, you do have to say no. You do have to put your foot down. But we just talked about it in terms of having tough conversations with employees. Again, it can turn into entitlement if they, we don't draw the line. Right. And you're now carrying that over from employee to even in a relationship right. aspect, which I do, you know, if we're going to go down that path, fuck with me here for a minute. Um, I think that this is a major fucking problem in the world today is that Nobody has boundaries. Nobody has standards. Nobody has values, as we've talked about in recent shows. Um, and if you don't have those, you're training them how to treat you. You're exactly fucking right. When you say yes to something and then you bitch about it, like, oh, my God, I can't believe they, they asked. Well, what did you say? Well, I told them I'd do it, but I'm like, okay. <laughs> then you're then they're going to do it again and again yeah. and again and yeah. again. Let's put it this way. You put fucking cat food outside, a cat fucking eats it, they're going to come back and tell there's no fucking food. Yeah. So they're going to keep coming back until you say fucking no. So don't get upset at them for doing exactly what it's fuck, what we all know they're going to do. Yeah. Get upset at yourself for not being fucking man or woman enough to create boundaries for yourself and tell people what you need or don't need or what you appreciate or don't appreciate. That's your life and that's your responsibility, okay? And if you don't do that, you will get walked all over. And I think there's a lot of fucking men on earth right now that have been beat the fuck down by media, this, that toxic, this. so they, they're getting quieter and quieter and quieter yeah, and quieter right. and letting people walk all over them yeah. more and more and more. And the biggest issue in the world today is we need more fucking men yeah. to plant their fucking feet in the ground, pound their fucking chest and say, I'm a motherfucking man yep. and here's my fucking values. Here's my standards. And I'm going to lead my fucking children and my wife and my fucking family down this path yeah. because I know it's the right fucking thing to do. And I don't give a fuck about what anybody else has to say. Absolutely. That's what's missing in the world today is more people with structure standards and values that actually say, now this is who we are. This is what we stand for. And the issue is, is if you don't do that within your organization and somebody else is like, well, this is who we are and who we stand Unless yeah. it's so-and-so, because so-and-so, they kind of get a pass because we kind of need them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's way too fucking often that we hear, well, I've got this person on the crew that is really negative and it's their heart and culture, but it's hard to find people and da 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 And a hundred percent of the fucking time that that individual was finally let go, the culture went way up, the yep. production went way up, and people feared not having the individual within their organization 
in fear that they wouldn't be as productive. And in actuality, they became more productive by ke- uh, getting out the cancer. Yeah. That's like saying, oh, well, I have cancer in my body. Well, I don't want to cut it open to get it out. So, I mean, that would hurt. No, cut the fucking cancer. Yeah, it's going to fucking hurt. It's going to hurt your business too for just a minor fucking moment. Yeah. Then, it, then you're going to get way better. Guess what? You cut out the cancer, your body feels way better. You feel way better and you're more fucking productive and you're happier. Yeah. That's the same thing in your organization. Cut that motherfucker. Take the fucking cancer out of your business. Fucking sew it up. Deal with the pain for a fucking month. Missing that individual. And then watch the fucking people rally around you because you made the right decision for your organization and your business. Mm -hmm. And watch your company fucking turn around. Exactly. It's a fucking 180. And if you are... Don't get me fucking Smarter than me... Don't like, let the cancer be created in the first place by being a strong enough leader that's to say, true. listen, that's true. this is the boundary. This is the, the the path. This is what we're doing. I love that you're here. I love that we have this personal relationship, but it's not ever going to come before what we're building here because there's a ton of people within this organization that depend on this company to feed their families more than just you and your ego or my ego. So we've got to be strong enough to say, hey, this is the path. Even though we've got this relationship, I don't want to say I'm too close to an employee or whatever, but even though we have this cool relationship, just know like this is the plan. We're sticking to the plan and draw those boundaries. Don't be like the dude that just lets his girlfriend borrow the car every time and then they end up married and she just walks on the rest of his life. If you really, if you really cared about the individual, you, you know, yes, again, it's the hard it's the harder thing to do. So therefore we know it's the right thing to do is is have those, some of those conversations first off. Um, Secondly, if you actually, if that is your friend and you do have a relationship with that person, shouldn't you care enough to create those boundaries for that individual so that they have the ability to thrive Amen. in that organization for a long yeah. period of time rather than do what you already know they're going to do? And then eventually that'll hit a dead end mm-hmm. because there's going to be resentments, there's going to be issues, there's going to be problems. Maybe not immediately, but one year, two years, three years, you're going to get upset that you. Ha- that you're kind of handcuffed to this individual, yeah. they're going to start resenting you that you've leaned on them so much for a business that's not even theirs. You're creating a toxic relationship that will eventually implode. Yeah. So if you actually truly, truly care and you want to keep it, you know, keep it in general, the relationship, the business, all of it, yeah. you will actually do the right thing and 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 have structure and have values and have a standard. And if that individual isn't honoring that in any given moment, having that honest and that 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 real conversation with the individual that you say that you care about. Yeah. Right. And honestly, guys, I mean, we're having this conversation today because we've been through all this, yeah. right? Like, yeah. and we're still continuously getting better at it and developing our systems, our processes, our leadership roles. And, and we've realized over the years, like by creating toxic people in the environment and having to let them go and seeing how all, all the, it makes your organization thrive and all that stuff. I mean, you know, we've been through all this stuff. And, and even though Trevor's great at having those accountability conversations with people and being honest with them, and he's phenomenal at it. And I've always actually struggled with it more like, but we've both done it, right? Like we've both had those people we've gotten close with relied relied on and and uh and then somehow it just festers this weirdness right that when when something goes south and so we've just been through this experience several times and we learn more from it every single time we go through it and so we share this stuff because we want you guys to learn it sooner we want you guys and gals building organizations to be able to go in there and set those boundaries sooner so that you don't have to go through it you're probably going to go through it no matter what at some point at some level, Hopefully but we want they you catch to go through it a lot less. Yeah, or or yes. they catch it sooner. Exactly. Like they start going through it and they're like, oh, damn, I think I'm starting to go down this path yeah. now of that conversation that I heard Trevor and Kel talk about. I better kind of reel this in before it exactly. gets too crazy or too, you know, because yeah. if you don't I, let... If, I am you, avoiding shit. They're right. I need to go have those conversations I feel like now. I'm walking on eggshells. I'm avoiding the, the, mm-hmm. all any of those emotions. Then that means that there's something, there's a conversation that has to happen yeah. Uh, with that individual yeah. period right you don't have to go scream at them i mean that was yeah. my problem is like <laughs> i wouldn't mind having a hard conversation i just had to be pissed off first and i've had to work on that a lot over the years dude it's like bottle shit up walk on eggshells avoid and then it's like you know what come in here yeah. you know and then you're kicking chairs and shit but right think, and so I, but i but i think it's people, like, people have done that even like married people have done that oh know? yeah dude i've done that yeah. married knows yeah. that right like, like okay fence fester some bullshit that's yeah. just dumb as hell <laughs> 
You know, and then and then it's the fucking dishes not being done one time that fucking blows the lid off when it had nothing to do with the fucking yeah. dishes. It had to do with the shit you've been bottling up for the last 30 fucking days. Yeah. The shit that's been getting on your nerves. You'll get to that, though, later <laughs> in the argument. Uh, but or we'll 30 start, years. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah. going to be honest with you now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Here's the scroll of shit I don't like here. <laughs> Over 30. <Yeah. laughs> I've documented it all. Uh, I think so, it's an important conversation. I'm glad we so. I'm glad we had yeah, it. Yeah, me, um, me too. It's, you know, and as your business gets bigger, it gets harder. So the sooner that you create that commitment to yourself and to the other people in the organization that, hey, no matter how close I get with these people, we're going to be honest and we're going to have those hard conversations when we got to have them a lot sooner. You're going to go a lot further, a lot faster. Damn straight. So, Guys, this episode was brought to you by the best accounting firm on the planet, Easier Accounting. That's right. So if you, uh, you know, struggling in that department, you know where to find us. Uh, Touch base, (laughs) DM, whatever it is. But, um, guys, we're going to continue to bring you stuff that we've dealt with that, that we see being issues in entrepreneurship, issues with, with, with business owners. Um, we're just trying to highlight things. We're trying to do everything that we can to serve the entrepreneurship community and scratch their back. We'll continue to do just that. If you will, make sure that you scratch our back in return. Make sure you're sharing the show, liking our posts, commenting on our shit. It's not a big, big request, but let's scratch each other's back here. Let's make sure that we're serving each other at the highest level. So absolutely. hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I thought it was a good one. I think it was a fun one. I like yeah, it. Yeah, me too. I got a little worked up in the middle there, uh, uh, yeah. which gets fun. <laughs> so, guys, kick ass. Take care. We'll see you next week. Peace.